Or do you want the do you want the guests to come in earlier if they get here? Like, do you want them to come in? Like, I don't know. We only really have to talk for twenty minutes. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure we just did talk for twenty minutes. So. So. so yeah. <laughs> it goes So I could bring Mr. Heary in, like at twenty after then. Yeah, I mean that's when we go to commercial break and go over the news. I don't care either way, I just have to know what to do. I'm trying to get somebody to come down on the fourth. I have to get there early, then they can crash overnight and go home next day. Or stay longer, whatever. <laughs> but I figure most people probably have to go back to work. What kind of dog do they have? They have two beagles, but they're like super, super old. Um, they might be watching the podcast right now. Rick and Maria, your dogs are really, really old. <laughs> 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 um, but they're so sweet. Nice. And they're cuddlers, and they're not like normal beagles that make like, a ton of like howling noises. Um, which is good because, you know, the houses are kind of like right on top of each other. Um, so I don't know that they'd be real thrilled about dogs that make lots of noise. <laughs> but like, like I said, they live just a few blocks from the Capitol building, so That's cool. all the like houses that are surrounding them, well, I shouldn't say all of them, but a good majority of them are like like our legislators. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. Yep. I said I'm trying to find a one of them that's, you know, maybe a little on the older side of the heart problem. <laughs> <laughs> Look up for a woman. <laughs> yeah. All right, three minutes until we're live on the radio. Can we guess so many questions? Yeah. <laughs> Welcome everybody on Facebook. It's this Leonetti for the first half hour. What do you say just? I mean, just, yeah. We're, it's not just. I mean, we're we, somebody. We are the show. Yeah, we are the show. Well said. Yeah. We're the show. It's your prime time show. Sorry. Two minutes until live on radio. <laughs> it is. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody get quiet over there. So we're gonna have a we're we've made a how big is our summer playlist? Or summer playlist twenty one songs. Wow, that's good. Yeah. I'm gonna have to actually make this playlist. The I Colossal it. Community Podcast. Summer playlist. Summer playlist. Summer vibes. Do I know about this playlist? Yeah, I posted it last week. I asked everybody what their summer playlist is. Oh. I didn't do that. Um. Some supporter you are. Oh, <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> One um, minute to we're live on the radio. You, you know what's really cool though? So at the the I keep calling it a concert because I really don't know like what it would be considered when it's like DJs, but the DJs that were like the main event were called Two Friends, and I'll tell you what like their mixes are so good. They're a mix of like every kind of music you can think of, like from obviously like hip hop, um, pop music, um, classic music. Um, you got they have like theme songs from like shows and movies like and they have country music built in it's like it's for everybody it's like, they're so good and I started like downloading them cool welcome to the Colossal Community Podcast on Colossal Radio heard the second and fourth Mondays of the month at 7 the opinions of this program are not necessarily that of Colossal Radio now, here's your host, Keith Hines.
and we had God. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Colossal Security Podcast, a show where we talk about random topics and have in-studio guests talking about things happening in and around the area. I'm your host Keith and I'm alongside my co-host Seriously. What up? And we are live broadcasting from Off the Church Music School in Delaware Avenue in Palmerton, PA. Tonight, we're mixing things up a little bit. Leanne and I are going to be talking about summer vibes for the first half hour to get you ready for the 4th of July and some fun facts about the summer. Nathan's hot dog eating contest. We have the summer playlist that you guys helped us create and we have a list of places where to watch the fireworks this year. Uh, second half hour, we're talking with Dr. Christopher Heary about youth summer camps happening in Palmerton. So, welcome everybody. So, we like Leanne, summer vibes already. Um, it, it's too hot for me. Too hot, right? <laughs> yeah. It's, I don't know, it's just so hot and gross and sticky. I'm ready for fall. Me too. Sorry, teachers. <laughs> Are you really sorry? A little, because I have a lot of friends that are teachers, but I'm a fall girl, I don't know, I can't, fall and winter, I can't take the heat. Right. There's not enough deodorant in the world for this fall. <laughs> Alright, so last week I posted a question, would there be in the first week of summer, what is on your summer playlist, and we had a great a response 21 songs you guys put on our list and uh, we'll start with the first one one of our advertisers Cindy's Deli posted all night 90s alternative rock especially the Beastie Boys fight for your right the party really love that one I like that actually I mean Beastie Boys are like they're classic now we played on all these stations at this point that's weird to say the 90s is classic. But I'm not wrong. No, you're not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> All right, second song was Summer of 69 by Brian Adams. I Get Around by the Beach Boys. There's a lot of Beach Boys here. Uh, Sounds of Summer album by the Beach Boys. The Boys of Summer by Don Hingley. Fireball by Pitbull. Bama Breeze by Jimmy Buffett. Joyride, Forever Young, La La Land, These Drums, Cruel Summer. That one's accurate. Cheeseburger in Paradise oh. by Jimmy Buffett. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All Summer Long by Kid Rock. Life is a Highway. One of These Days by Nick Walker. And Summertime by Jay-Z, Jazzy, and Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Lay down. That's a good one, yeah. That's a good one. The Humpty Dance by Digital Underground. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm not a big fan of that song. It's weird. Uh, this Is How We Do It by Mel Tell Jordan. Mel Tell. Informer by Snell. That's a good one. That's a flashback. <laughs> <laughs> And the last one, Good Vibrations by the Beach Boys. That's a good one. Yeah, that is a good one. So that was our list of what everybody's playing for the summer. So if you were to cruise around with your windows down this summer, what's your favorite song to listen to in the car, windows down? Um, favorite song. I can't think of one top of my head right now. There's a lot of them. There's a lot of them. Depends what mood you're in. It's true, but there's like some really good cruising around town songs. Like I really like uh, um. I don't know, I'm no, you have to look it up. I know, just like that, it's gone. I said I'm, I'm a little on the weird side today. <laughs> Anybody else? Shotgun. Any? Shotgun. By. George Ezra. Is that his name? Yep, George Ezra. Anybody out there watching on Facebook, you have any other song suggestions that you're listening to during the summer? Please post them in the comments. 
So that was our summer playlist, Leanne. Where do you want to go next? I mean, last time we talked a lot about hot dogs. Do you remember that? Yeah. It made me really hungry for hot dogs. And now on, we're talking about hot dogs again. Right, the eating contest. Yeah. Why does everything circle back to hot dogs? It's a good question. It has something to do with the 4th of July, I guess. I yeah. Know. Summer. Summer and hot dogs. Yeah. Summer is the season for questionable meat. Yeah, I guess everybody likes that mystery meat. Because <laughs> 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 it's cheap and easy to make. So, okay, but let there are different levels of hot dogish though. So, I've, I'm kind of a hot dog snob. So, I like me some all beef hot dogs. Like they have the best flavor um, and I'm a big fan of like Nathan's or um, Nathan's or what's the other one that's kosher long skinny ones oh, I'm not sure it's not Oscar Mayer is it no no, no. I, don't know. <laughs> Oscar Mayer. I don't know kosher I just Cos- grab a Oscar Mayer is ballpark no, not ballpark. no it's not ballpark Oh, come on. I don't know. Um, National Hebrew. Oh, okay. Their hot dogs are so good. I never had those. Long and skinny. Never mind. Um, but yeah, all beef. All beef, yeah, that's like the way I go. Yeah. And the bun size ones. Yes. Well, yeah, they don't fit your bun, then. It's just... <laughs> then, you know, there's too much filler happening. Right. Yeah. So, is the Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Contest on the 4th of July? Yes, it is. It is on the 4th of July at Coney Island. Coney Island. Have you ever been to it? No, I haven't been to it, but I watch it every year. I don't know why, I just do. (laughs) (laughs) Highly televised. Is it on ESPN? Is it So, it's it's considered like a sporting event? Yes, it's an eating contest or sport. Have you ever seen anything like really gross happen on it? Like people vomit or whatever? Yeah, there was a couple that vomit. They like gagged and the grossest thing, I mean, I not a whole lot grosses me out, but when they dunk that bun into the water. Oh. Um, yeah, that's just bad. Water bun? What What are they, what, what's the purpose of the bun water Because bun it thing? makes it softer and it goes down easier because they don't actually chew the bun, they swallow it. Stop. Yeah. I did a lot of reading up on this. That's disgusting. Yeah, they actually, they actually swallow, they make it wet so they can swallow it. Wait, so does that mean they swallow hot dogs whole? They don't chew Some of them do, yeah. They take, a couple, they take, a, take a couple bites and they swallow the whole. So there's like a really big like choking hazard involved in this. Yeah, oh yeah, definitely. So there's like paramedics on standby. Yeah. It's a full out sport. Paramedics are on standby. So, has anybody had to, like, Heimlich or anything? Not that I know of, and not that I saw, but... Oh. <laughs> this is more intense than I thought, I mean... Yeah, it is, it is very intense. The more you read into it, it's, like, bizarre. There's actually a uh, eating contest website where you can go and qualify for the Nathan's. Oh, wait, so you just can't show up and do no, it? No, you have to qualify for it. So, there are many qualifying eating contests mm-hmm. how would you even know where they are you just have to go into the national eating contests website and they list where all the qualifiers are so and this is like man or woman yep. can do it yeah they both actually they have both class they have their own separate class they have a women's champion and a man champion so and they're probably like they're probably skinny people aren't they yeah, they are skinny people. Sure. Because <laughs> <laughs> they probably only eat like three times a year. Yeah, probably. Ugh. So, the event is occurring every 4th of July since 1972 at Coney Island, New York. Legend has it that the first ever hot dog eating contest occurred in 1960 when two immigrants looked to settle who was the most patriotic person as the exact history is yet to be solidified, the legend continues to grow and gaining worldwide attention. Wait, so they they challenge each other on who is more patriotic 
Right. And they were like, let's settle this by eating hot dogs. Yeah, I'm more American than you are. <laughs> <laughs> that actually makes more sense than not. Yeah, okay. By the early mid 2000s, the sport was primarily dominated by Japanese contestants who, want, who particularly by Takaru, I'm not even going to try his last name, who won six contests in a row. And then Joey Chestnut came along, and he's been winning ever since. Yeah. So, do you have to be from the United States to be No, it's a worldwide... Uh, so that the patriotism thing really went downhill. Yeah, more. patriotism. Yeah. <laughs> because <laughs> it's not really an American thing anymore. No, it's not. It's worldwide approximately 35,000 fans are estimated to show up to Coney Island to watch this event with millions watching at home. So I have to say though I would not be able to attend this kind of event because I'm a community puker. So if one guy up front or woman you know decided they've reached the limit or whatever and inevitably regurgitated some of said hot dogs, <laughs> I would be vomiting with them. I can't, I, even if I saw it on TV, I'd probably have to have a garbage can in front of me just in case. Really? You're that sensitive? I am. Like, wow. I can't see people puke. That's interesting. It's disgusting. So, is, did we invent hot dogs? No, we did not invent hot dogs. Okay. Who invented hot dogs? Probably Germany. They're a big fan of yeah, probably cylindrical meats. Yeah, with the bratwurst and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Huh. So well, the, there you have that. The world champion Joey Chestnut currently holds the title of eating hot dog, setting a new record: seventy-six hot dogs and buns in two, 2021. In twenty twenty-two, Joey won his fifteenth mustard yellow belt after eating sixty-three hot dogs and buns. Yeah. If you, okay, let's just think about this for a second. Okay. If you piled all of those hot dogs and buns into like on a, on a plate or a tray, I guess it would be a tray and not going to put on a plate. Yeah. All of that mass is then in his body. Right. Right? Right. So even though it might be like masticated, so chewed up. It still is that mass of food. Well, I'm sure they go backstage and puke it on them. Okay, stop. Moving on. I, I can imagine. But I can't. Last year's female champion, Mickey Sudo, holds the women's world record of 48 and a half Nathan's famous hot dogs in 10 minutes. Mickey won her eighth title on July 4th, 2022, with 42 hot dogs and buns eaten. <laughs> And I did see a picture of her. She's really skinny, so. <laughs> <I figured. laughs> yeah. Oh, man. So the Takaru won from 2002 to 2006, and then Joey Chestnut won 2007 to 2014. Matthew Stoney won in 2015. 2016 to 2022, Joey Chestnut has been winning ever since. And the women's league actually started in 2011. Up until then, the women competed with the guys. So, okay, but there has to be some kind of health ramifications for this quote unquote sport. Like, I don't know, there's pretty. This, this qualifies as, as like a binge eating disorder. Yeah, basically. Is yeah. what this is. You would think about it. Because I saw some of Joey Chestnut's other eating records. He ate like a whole turkey in like 20 minutes. Was, wait, was the turkey cook, like yeah, cooked? Or did he just like whole, catch the turkey and yeah. just rip into it? Okay, no. So it was like, like a Thanksgiving turkey. Yeah, Thanksgiving turkey, yep. I don't know how I feel about that. Hmm? I don't... You can't... 
It's insane of what these people. It is are. insane. I think he has like a record of 136 donuts. You can look it up online. I looked it up. There's some of those, <laughs> his records are pretty wild. Wow. It's like he doesn't just hold the hot dog eating contest record. He yeah. holds a lot. I bet you he has a lot of daddy issues. But if you ever find yourself that you want to get into the hot dog eating contest <laughs> and get a chance at the belt, you have to train yourself. And this is the way they train themselves, Leanne. They train their jaw muscles. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna let that one go. They break the dog in half and put it in their mouth separate from the bun. And they clear out space so they don't go completely empty. So they just keep shoving it in their mouths and just keep chewing all the time. Yeah, that sounds sickening to me. <laughs> That, that just sounds so gross. I, and you watch this every year? Yeah, I watch it every year. I don't know why it's this entertaining. They actually, in the beginning, too, they have a contest of who could drink a gallon of lemonade the fastest, too. And that's pretty crazy. I can't. <laughs> I just like it because they, they actually have an announcer, almost like a boxing announcer, and he really gets into it. Like the veins are popping out of his head, and he's like all hyped up for this. Wow. It's an old guy, and he wears the straw hat like a barber, and he's like all into it. And So what do they win? They win a, a belt. So there's no like... I think they win money in too, but they win a championship belt that they get to have every year. Do they win like Nathan's hot dogs like for, for, for a for year? Life. Or for, for life. <laughs> for <laughs> life. <laughs> I if I ate that many hot dogs at one time and then had to yak them up after I was done, I don't know that I'd ever be able to eat hot dogs again. <laughs> Probably not. I won't even be able to look at them without yeah. feeling sick. It's like I tequila. Like one bad night on tequila, can't touch that again. I was in a marshmallow eating contest once and I can't really eat marshmallows again. Yeah, it just mm-hmm. ruins it. Because, like, food's supposed to be enjoyable. Right. And, like, life-sustaining. And when you, like, abuse that, I feel like you just can't... Yeah. You can't go back. <laughs> you can't go back from that. Once you go binge, you can't go back. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, man. Anywho. So, still summer topic. Um, but... Obviously, Fourth of July is coming up. Mm-hmm. Um, do you have plans for the Fourth? Not really. No. Just watch the fireworks from town. Yeah, that'll be nice. Yeah, just sit at my driveway and I can watch them. Okay, it's pretty chill. That seems like a cute way to celebrate. Yeah. Lawn chair in the driveway. <laughs> a lawn chair in the driveway. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I can appreciate that. Well, I don't know, it, for the people that were watching Facebook before we went live on the air, um, they've heard, I think, but I will be in D.C. that week, so, um, at my cousin's house, and his house is three blocks from the Capitol building, so um, I'll probably meander down to the National Mall and watch the 4th of July fireworks on Capitol Hill, so nice. that'll be pretty fun. That'll be pretty cool. So, yeah. Not not as maybe relaxing as <laughs> a Keith Fourth of July, but it's still, still relaxing. Yeah, and it's just three blocks away, so right, just, yeah. you know, walk down, sit in the grass. Starts at, no- I think they said, I don't know why it says this, but I looked it up, it says it starts at 9.09. 909. 909. I, maybe that's just when it's dark enough to be able to do it. Maybe, or that is probably because it's on TV. True. Because yeah. they do that odd time for TV. Yeah, come on, village. Yeah, well, apparently they line the um, reflection pool in, in the mall, and that's where they shoot them off from. Nice. So. I'll take a video, and I'll share it with you guys on the Facebook page. Nice, yeah. 
So maybe I'll go live. I don't know. Let's find ooh, things out. Ooh. I know. Ooh, ooh. Ooh. Stay tuned. The live button. I don't know. All right. We're going to go to a commercial break, and we'll be right back. Dr. Michael Everett's dental practice on Fire Line Road in Palmer not only supports Colossal Radio and the Colossal Community Podcast, but is a big supporter of our kids and our communities. Two causes Dr. Everett cares for are the Lee Heighton Education and Athletic Foundation, also known as LEAF, as well as the Carbon County Community Foundation. For more information and ways to support these amazing organizations, visit the Facebook pages of the Lee Heighton Athletic and Education Foundation and the Carbon County Community Foundation. They've become a solid member of the community in the past five years. They take pride in the quality, freshness, and variety of their food. They're known for their warm customer service and friendly staff. So we have the summer foods back and the food food and the fire Deli, the fire next to the Deli, located at the Piper's Ice Dam in Franklin Township. Yeah. A selection uh, of sandwiches and wraps, which are prepared fresh daily. Cindy's Deli. In Franklin Township. Yeah, there's Cindy's Deli. Also, you got some full service catering for corporate functions really? and other events. That, that and beer serve fact? Each guest That's impressive. The yeah. events. You gotta check out Cindy's Deli in Lee Heights. So, really, the 4th of July, July is just like a day of massive and so much more. Yeah, it's just a party. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Eat and drink and be there. Yeah. Make sure give them a like on Facebook. <laughs> and then if Look, You're awake for the fireworks. You can watch the fireworks. Or try to light them. Yeah. <laughs> Using open quality shampoos, then a blow dry. They'll even do your nails and make sure you're feeling great from head to tail. It's got their clippers and bombers in both. For 22 years, Stacy and Jennifer have been pampering your pets. So if you're looking for a local pet grooming service and an experienced staff, it's Country Clippers. Get your best groom and give them the care they deserve. Country Clippers and Palmerton. Find them online. Want to come to the Poconos? The Country Inn and Suites by Carlson is conveniently located in Lee Heighton, PA, right off the turnpike. Located just right so you can ski Blue Mountain, see historical Jim Thorpe, or catch a show at Penn's Peak. Unwind in the indoor pool and in the mornings enjoy the complimentary hot be our guest breakfast. The Country Inn and Suites Lee Heighton and Jim Thorpe PA, located right off of I-476, your home away from home in the Poconos. She's been involved right, in 40 seconds in a row. Here's what just some of the clients are saying. She stands out from the others, extremely knowledgeable of the people, townships, and properties in the area. You want her on your team. It's Kristen Ober, owner and broker of Iron Valley Real Estate Northeast in Palmerton. Kristen and her team with Iron Valley Real Estate will help you navigate the home buying or selling process. Let's face it, it can be stressful, but Iron Valley Real Estate Northeast is with you every step of the way, helping you make the best educated decisions. Covering the greater Lehigh Valley, Thomas, Monroe, and Schuylkill County areas, it's Iron Valley Real Estate Northeast in Palmerton. Check out their listings at Iron Valley Real Estate Northeast.com. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Lost Community Podcast. Leanne and I are talking about summer pies, and we just got done talking about Nathan's hot dog eating contest. And Leanne, you're not, not going to try it out for it. I, I can't. I can't do it. I can't even watch it. <laughs> You'll watch it. I don't know that I can. I just don't know. I I feel like it would make me sick to watch that. Not that I think, I mean, to each their own, you know, right. if you can watch it. Right, you have to it. watch the beginning when they're introducing the guests because you have to see the guy get, like, really into like, it. Yeah, like, real pumped. Yeah. I could probably handle, like, that lemonade chugging contest. Right. But I don't know that I could watch people just, like, swallow whole, like, cylinders of meat. It went soggy buns. Yeah, stop. Okay. <laughs> All right, moving <laughs> on to summer food facts for the 4th of July. You want to read them all? Yeah, so I think these are pretty interesting, actually. So over 74 million Americans are uh, planned to grill out on the 4th of July, obviously pending weather. Um, so this is like the breakdown of meat for the grill. Um, of what's consumed. So 85% are burgers. Um, this is 
like eighty five percent of burgers are popular on the grill. Steak is eighty percent. I would want steak, but I guess if you're feeding a lot of people, yeah, you that might get a little pricey. Yeah. Um, then next in line is hot dogs, which I don't know that I can talk about hot dogs anymore. And then and then chicken. So chickens for those like responsible, healthy people. I right, think. I guess so. Yeah. Or the pouring people, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so every Fourth of July, uh, oh, I'm forget hot dogs. 150 million hot dogs are consumed in the U.S. That's maddening. So I will tell you that one of like the things I like the least about traveling the Turnpike is watching pig trucks full of pigs go in one direction <laughs> and then empty pig trucks come in the other direction. <laughs> you know what happened there. Yeah. yeah. And so I have a feeling around this time of year there's a lot of um, pig deaths. Yeah, I think so. Um, anyhow, 70, 750 million pounds of chicken is purchased leading up to the 4th of July. So obviously there's a lot of chicken deaths as well. Yep. Um, Americans spend much more on condiments than chips and dip. Um, well, yeah, because you can't just eat this meat naked. Well, I, I find it kind of interesting. They spend more money on that than so. What do they? How many bottles of ketchup and stuff are they buying? Well, what do you what do you put on like your burgers and hot dogs? We know what Stacy does. Ketchup, it. mustard. If there's onions, I'll put onions on, chili on a hot dog, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. So burgers, my favorite condiments on a burger is actually ketchup and mayonnaise. Yep, that's good too. That's my favorite. And then hot dogs are just uh, ketchup and mustard. I used to be into the whole relish scene, but I gotta be in the mood for that now. I don't know why. I like pickles. And sauerkraut too. I put sauerkraut. Oh, sauerkraut. That's probably more of a of our region kind of deal. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> um, so five percent. This I like this fact. Five percent of the national beer consumption happens over the Fourth of July weekend. So not necessarily the Fourth of July. Right. But like you know, this coming weekend, people are probably gonna have a lot of picnicking out or whatever. Um, Cause you know, you don't have to get up in the morning the right. next day. Um, so that is approximately sixty-eight point three million cases of beer. That's a lot. It's a lot of beer. <laughs> yeah. And well, we have somebody here that says they see those trucks every day going to work. Oh, I'm so sorry. It's it's hard. It's like heartbreaking, and I don't know. You feel bad a little bit, like. I mean, it's not going to stop me from eating pig, per se, because right. they just taste really good. It's really their <laughs> fault that they taste good. Right. But it's just like... You know where it's, what's happening. Yeah. Like, I almost want to, like, <laughs> flash my lights, and, like, so the truck thinks something's wrong, and they pull over, and I just, like, jump out of my car and, like, open, open up the door. let them run. <laughs> but then they probably all just get hit by cars. Probably, yeah. Or so, ultimately, right. that's not a good plan. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the last one is not a food fact, but as you can see, it's just a little history thing there. Do you want me to read that one? I can read it. You can read it. Go for it. Hmm? What? Go ahead. Go for it. All right. Thomas Jefferson, at 82 years old, and John Adams, at 90, both died on July 4th, 1826, within five hours of each other on the 50th anniversary of signing the Declaration of Independence. So there's some history for you. So the Declaration of Independence is cursed. I wonder if that's I why. Just, I just made that up. Oh, that it's cursed, maybe it is. Maybe. Just for these two guys, though. <laughs> <laughs> I need to go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> it is kind of interesting now that they died five hours apart. Yeah. Maybe it is cursed. I mean, maybe they tried to eat 100 pounds of hot dogs. <laughs> maybe. Have you ever seen who was the most patriotic? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <It was> a... <laughs> Unknown facts about our president. Yeah, that's funny. It is. We're funny people. 
I try to be. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know if our guest for the second half hour is here. I don't know. Stacey hasn't come in yet. But I'll go check on her. Yeah. While she's doing that, I'll read over some Colossal Radio news. Don't forget to get your tickets for the Seafood Boil for July 16th. You can find all that information on the Hoffman Mill website. And don't forget those of you that have Jeeps to go on to the Colossal Radio Dot Rocks website to get your tickets and meal packages for the Colossal Radio Jeep Fest. Tickets are selling fast for that. And uh, you can find all the information as well on that on the Colossal Radio website. And don't forget about the cruise for next year on the Sympathy of Seas ship from June 21st to June 28th of 2024. Tickets are selling fast. The doc said he already has three charter buses full, so make sure you get your rooms booked for that. Did I see on his post that it's an 80s cruise? Yes, he's having an 80s theme. He's going to be doing an 80s cocktail, and then you're supposed to dress in 80 attire, and then they're going on an 80s bar uh, pub crawl on the ship. Right. So, just to clarify, that's like the 80s decade, not 80s people. Right, 80s decade. Yeah, so don't dress up like an 80 year old because <laughs> that's wrong. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's 80 decade, not people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So you can uh, find that information on Colossal Radio's website, or you can t- contact Boss Class Travel and get all the information from there. Like I said, tickets are selling fast, so make sure you book them. All right, we're talking summer camp, Leanne. Did you go to summer camp? Boy Scout summer camp, Boy yes. Boy Scout summer camp? Yep. That's awesome. It was. Yeah, I went to two different summer camps. I went to church summer camp every year. And then I also went to band camp. Cool. Is it really though? I don't know. I never was in band, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, our guest here is St. John Newman Regional Principal, uh, Dr. Christopher Heary. He's here to talk about summer camps. Welcome. Oh, thank you. Good to be here. So uh, tell us about St. John, John Newman Regional School. Uh, well, we have two locations. Our younger students, K-1 and 2, are in our Slatington campus. <clears throat> and then our uh, 3 to 8 is right over here in uh, Palmerton on uh, Lafayette Avenue. Okay. And uh, we, have, uh, we have a lot of good, exciting things going on through the year, so we tried to schedule some stuff during the summer so that uh, kids have some options to do during the summertime. And this is open to everyone, even if they're not in yeah, Absolutely, yeah. Open to everyone, uh, doesn't matter where you live. So, I mean, uh, we have students from uh, Pleasant Valley, Palmer, and Lehigh, and Northern Lehigh, Jim Thorpe. So, or, so it's not just for the children in Palmer or Slington, it's for anyone in the area. Very cool. So, did we, uh, I'm guessing, have they started yet? Or? No, uh, we, our first week of camp is July 10th, and uh, we, each week we're offering two different um, options. So um, on the 10th, we have basketball camp starting up and we have an art camp as well. And then the following week, we have a cheerleading camp and a technology camp. Uh, and then we have um, another basketball camp and a chess camp at the at the end. So we're doing four weeks of it all together. Well, wow. so there's really a camp for everyone, so. We're, we're trying, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's cool. Which camp would you pick? What camp would I pick? I would probably take... Cheerleading camp, right? Yeah. I'd Yeah. You'd be a good base. <laughs> I'd probably... Technology camp would probably get... Yeah, that, yeah. that's definitely... <laughs> I was going to say technology or chess. No offense. No, I never played chess. So no? No. You don't, do you know how to play chess at all? I never played it. Oh, interesting. I would probably pick art camp. That sounds like fun. Yeah. Get your hands dirty a little bit. I like that. So what's it all included with the fee? Uh, everyone will get a, a t-shirt and uh, it's it goes for three hours every every day. We end around 3.30 and uh, your parents can you know, drop them off a little early. And uh, um, so for each of camp, like the technology camp, we're gonna be using our 3D printer so we'll be actually creating things uh, in 3D, which is, which is neat. 
um, bas basketball camp. I'll be doing the two weeks of basketball camp. That's kind of what I've done in my other lifetime besides this. So, um, and uh, I actually do other summer basketball camps. I've been doing them for about 30 years. So, right. um, so we're, we're doing uh, the basketball camps. And, and then for the art, um, the uh, our art teacher, Erica Heary, is actually, um, she does a really good job with the kids. I mean, she makes some incredible things. So I'm sure that the kids that come from that will be will be excited. Uh, we have the technology, and then the other one, the chess camp, we we threw in at the end there because so many kids were asking for it. So um, we have a, um, a a chess club uh, advisor, and he's like, "Yeah, sure, I'll do it." So she's well, trying to give a bunch of different different options. So for the the kids that, that aren't really into the running around as much, but you know right. still want to you know have a cool experience, and we're trying to give it to them. Exercise their brains. So if like let's just say. Well, for any of the camps, really, do they need to have experience in that no, area so no. you can learn from scratch? Yep. Even for, like, uh, basketball and cheerleading, mm -hmm. like, even if you've never done it before. Yeah. That, uh, the cheering, we're, we're allowing uh, um, children who are going to enter into kindergarten all the way up to eighth grade. Oh, wow. Uh, <clears throat> so, and uh, the, um, um, the adults that are helping out with that are cheerleading coaches, and they do a lot of the youth, youth um, clinics anyway, so they're excited about it. And so we, we've, we think that uh, um, it doesn't matter what experience level you're at, you will be able to, you'll have fun doing something. That's cool. Yeah. So um, with the fee, that includes like all of the supplies for like what you do in art or yep. technology and stuff. So with the 3D printer, they get to like make things and take them home? Yeah. Yes. Wow, that's yeah. really cool. Like at the end of the year, actually the one project that our technology teacher is doing is having them make chess pieces. <laughs> oh, <laughs> nice. And they were designing them and, and doing that. So yeah, it's, make it's, their own it's chess a cool thing. Yeah. So. That's really cool. Is this the first year you've been doing this? Um, yeah, well, I, I took over uh, as principal of the school not even quite a year ago. I took over uh, the end of August last year. I got hired. and. Uh, so I think in the past they've had some art camps in the in the past, but um, we're just trying to we're trying to get more people to just see who we are over there. It's a really good school. Um, you know, a lot of people when I took the job over, they they were surprised that the school was even still in existence because so many of the other private schools had closed. Of course. But um, we're we're plugging along and we're doing really well. So we're trying to get our you know more people to understand that we're there. I actually went to kindergarten in this school. I was the first kindergarten class. To come through when it actually opened a Sacred Heart School, so you know, a couple years later, yeah. you know, um, you're an alumni. I'm, I'm an alumni, <laughs> and now I'm back at it. So that's it's it's, it's a really neat experience, and uh, the school hasn't changed a whole lot in those years, I have to say. But I mean, it's a really nice school. We have a lot of a lot of things that we offer offer for the children. So we thought of running a, a, a summer camp would first of all give parents a, a little break during the summer because um, we can all use that and. Uh, also, so children can come in and kind of see what all we, you know, experiences that we have for them. Yeah, make some new friends. Yeah, sounds interesting. Summer. In the air conditioning. Yes, it is air conditioning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's important, right? If, to me, it is. Yeah. I don't know. Like, I won't say it again, except maybe one more time. I hate summer. I can't take the heat. I guess I gotta, gotta get out the kitchen. <laughs> Just think, as we get younger, the heat gets worse, too. As we get younger, yes. As we get younger, yeah, in the other direction, mm -hmm. yeah. So, how can people uh, sign up for the kids? Uh, we're we're on Facebook. Um, so, um, if there's uh, if you just go on St. John Newman Facebook, um, you'll you'll be able to see. There's uh, we're also having some some things around town. Uh, it has a QR code that you can just click and, and and go there. You can go to our website, St. John Newman School, or you can also uh, you're even welcome to come and sign up that day. So. Uh, we're assuming that you know there'll be some people show up that first day and say is it still you know too late to sign up and it's not we'll take children even if they come in once we've started already we'll you right. know we just we want we want as many kids as we can you know to enjoy themselves that's really neat yeah also with the public uh, program the rex program here that goes in the morning that's why we we start hours later in the day so we're thinking that some of them might you know might want to come both. over and yeah. you know right and do both yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. it's nice for people though. If parents work half the day, they work the morning, and that allows them to get their child to an afternoon camp. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. You gonna sign up? Kind of. I kind of want to go to art camp, but <laughs> um, it, the age closes at 
14. I don't think I can pull it off anymore. I thought you were close to that, no? Yeah. <laughs> it depends. I, I don't know. You just turned 15 last week. Yeah. <laughs> oh, just passed. Yeah. Nuts. I might crash it, though. 3D printing sounds fun. That does sound fun, yeah. Make your own chess pieces and then learn how to play chess. And then chess. go to chess camp. Can they like, do they only pick one camp or can they like cross? You can go uh, to whatever. I mean, the way we, we kind of have it scheduled out, um, like, so we, we have each week we have something in the gym. So, like, the first week is basketball camp. So, that's downstairs. And uh, Eric will have the art, ca- uh, the art camp upstairs. And then the following week, um, I think the next one is like the cheering. And the, so, we're, we're trying to kind of, so we're hoping that some, some children come to, you know, multiple weeks and try either something different or even new. We're going to do the, the basketball camp two of the weeks, our camp two of the weeks, so if they want to come in and do both of them, you know, that's that's fine. Um, my earlier, my younger days, I, I did basketball camps out of West Virginia, and I would do seven weeks in a row, and sometimes you'd see the same kid there week in, week out, because they, they loved it and just wanted to do it, so they can, they can do multiple weeks for sure. Nice. So there you go. Yeah. So can't the ages start from five and then they go up to 14, mm-hmm. with the exception of we're not teaching anyone under 10 chess. That is probably a good idea. <laughs> um, <laughs> and the technology camp starts at eight. Yeah, with that one, they, they learn actually how, how to de- design everything. So probably a little younger than that. It's difficult it's for them to do It's a little difficult, that. yeah. yeah. And that is interesting that you are letting boys and girls in cheerleader camp because you don't see boys in high school, but at college, mm-hmm. you see guys yeah. in cheerleading. Right. You're starting to see some high school ones, I think. Right. Yeah. Not locally, but in I think we had it. Didn't we might have a male cheerleader? I feel like we did. I, I, maybe not this past year, but I think they had in the past. And... It's important, honestly, to have male body structure in situations where you're throwing people in the air, and not that girls can't do it, but, you know, it's good to know that it's open for that, you know? So where do you see this camp growing, say, in the next five years or so? Do you see more camps being added? We, We hope to, yeah. I mean... We started a little bit later this year. We figured July was probably the good spot where, you know, when students get out of school in June, they, they kind of just want to chill for a little bit. But now, July, I think that their motor's getting ready to go again. Right. It's not, this is not a, a, a terribly structured thing. This is not school they're going to. It's fun. Uh, the purpose of it is for them to have fun and to, to have different experiences than just watching TV all summer. So um, so we're hoping as the, as the years go on, if we're able to continue offering it, um, either offering more weeks or also maybe offering some in the morning. We for the first year we, we picked the afternoons just because we thought it piggybacked well with the with the public school and then even with the with the basketball it's co-ed. Um, I'm actually the um, head girls basketball coach at Northern Lehigh, okay. so you know so we'll be able to, to you know divide them up and so uh, that age is it's actually very good to have them co-ed. And are you going to have kids from Northern Lehigh? Uh, yeah, I mean, we're, we're hoping our other school is over there. I'm actually also going to be doing a, a Northern Lehigh camp for, for my high school team for, a, for them later in the summer. So um, lots of lots of basketball experiences for them if they need it. And we're actually starting a little bit later because the week before we started this camp, I'm doing the one out in West Virginia. So I'll, no. I'll, be, I'll be starting my basketball uh, summer stuff up soon. Yeah, so you know your stuff <laughs> when it comes to basketball. <laughs> So everybody's getting ready for football, and you're starting basketball already. Yeah, yeah. So. Well, if you want to be good, you gotta practice. Right. Yeah. Well, in my other lifetime, I was a college coach. I was the head Wilkes basketball coach for years. I was in college for 22 years, uh, coaching women, always women's basketball. Um, and then uh, when I had the opportunity to come back here as a as a principal, it was kind of exciting. So it's still a way for me to kind of keep connected with with my real passion, which is basketball for yeah. sure. Yeah. yeah. That school is becoming more prevalent, I think, in this area. Um, even maybe overshadowing football at times because there's been a lot of really good local basketball teams that have made it pretty far recently. Right. So it's becoming more of like a hey, we should probably pay attention to this sport because it's. 
Well, in, in Palmer and both are boys and girls teams. We're two of the best teams in the league. Yeah. And at Northern Lehigh made the states this year for the first time in a long time. So yeah. it's kind of a fun ride. So, I mean, yeah, you're right. There's there's some really good uh, numbers coming through. And mm -hmm. with smaller communities like this, it kind of goes up and down. The bigger schools, they're always going to have consistent numbers. But in smaller schools like we have around here, mm -hmm. uh, it, the one sport kind of tends to take its place for a while until the, the numbers catch up to another one. Right. What's your favorite part about basketball? Why why did you choose basketball as? Um, well, I just I I know I I can't really answer a question, but I just had a passion for right. it for a very long time. I enjoy the I enjoy the sport. Um, all four of my sons play basketball and baseball as well. But um, it's just it's it's a team sport where you learn so much more than just anything. Just about the the skill sets. Um, I mean, when you're out, basketball I always say is different than any other sport because you don't have time to reset. Basketball is a continuous sport for the the time that you're out there, whereas football, you run a play and then you get to huddle. Same thing for baseball, you throw a pitch and you get to re refocus. Basketball, you're going from defense to offense to defense, so you're really relying on your teammates. And you know, it's it's. Uh, I think you learn more from sports sometimes than, than you do in almost anything else that you do because those skill sets that you have, relying on people, having people rely on you, following through, doing what you need to, working hard, all those things yeah. end up helping you to be successful no matter what you're going to do later yeah. in life. All sports do that, but obviously I'm a little more towards basketball. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you, are you good at basketball? I'm not good, but I'm not bad. I'm in between. It's not a real answer. It is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm mediocre. I, I'm good. I can actually... I'm pretty good at making baskets, but from like a standing position with no one coming at me... <laughs> Uh, I'm good at that, but I don't know if like someone was chasing me. <laughs> I thought it would be okay. Well, like I can say, I won't mention any names on the air. Um, I did mention to you before the, the uh, you came into the podcast, but as far as being a principal, um, our neighbor she does go to the school, and she gave a very good um, testimonial that she was so excited because she. Um, with keeping, you know, the neighbor, she said, oh, you're getting to talk to my principal. So she thinks very highly of you, and she actually enjoys when you get to fill in um, teaching her class when her teacher isn't there or, you know, has to step out of the room. So you got a very good testimonial from uh, one of the students in the school. That. So yeah. I saw yeah. her mommy was watching earlier, so um, <laughs> we'll give her a shout out. She'll know. <laughs> yeah. That's good. Most people are afraid of their principals. Right? I, I don't think I can do anything. <laughs> so, so. Well, I, that's one part of, of being in a smaller school when I took over um, we we were missing a lot of uh, we had some faculty that we had to fill in at the last minute and we were fortunate that we got some really good faculty but while we were going through that process I was kindergarten teacher I was first grade teacher I was art teacher I was bouncing all over the place but I started 30 some years ago as a kindergarten teacher that's why that's where I started yeah so I, I enjoy getting into the classroom so uh, baptism by fire I got to know all the kids very well because I was teaching every class at some point throughout the first two months of school so so I got to I kind of have a different uh, relationship with them rather than just being the person in the office that they'll get called to if they if they're naughty and they, <laughs> yeah. uh, they actually got to know me more of a person so that's and really it's a great cool. school it's really a great school that's really cool yeah it is cool uh, you, you probably get that more interaction in a regular school oh yeah yeah, absolutely. I mean, the the smaller the smaller class sizes, smaller schools like this, um, you you get to know. I mean, I can I literally know every single kid in the school's name, and most of the, you know I can see who their parent is and when they're picking up. I mean, in a bigger school you don't have. I mean, we're just under hundred kids, but still, you know that's it's nice to be able to really have a connection with every child, and uh, so I enjoy that part of the school. I really do. Nice. Do you get called to the principal's office a lot? Please the fifth. Okay. <laughs> I don't think so. No? Not to my recollection. Maybe once or twice. And only in middle school. Only in middle school. Yeah, I guess that was my rebel phase. <laughs> All right, we're going to go to a commercial break, and we'll be right back. Dr. Michael Everett's dental practice and honestly, on Byline Road in Palmer not only I supports think colossal radio for the most part, the principal but wasn't the disciplinary, the vice. <laughs> so, 
are the like, heightened education. I, I didn't, so in middle school, school no, this my league, principals were well Mr. Surface, Surface and my amazing organizations. Vice principal was athletic and education Tack. And the Carbon County Community And she's been involved in real estate. I'm a little scared, Mr. Tack. <laughs> He's loud, but like you just, you just, you just tickle him a little bit, and you get him. <laughs> he is a funny guy. Same with Mr. Surface. He had like a scary voice, but he really wasn't scary at all. Because I mean, I'll walk through Giant now, and I'll hear Miss Cock, and I'll turn around, and it's like Mr. Surface, and I'll be stressful. My dad's on next to Mr. Surface for all the years. Yeah. Plus, in the middle school, my dad was a teacher there, so I got in trouble for stepping one toe out of line. He used to go to all my teachers and say, like, you'd be harder on her than any other student. I remember the one time I was supposed to get, like, something signed, and I forgot, and I asked my teacher if I could go to my dad's room to get it signed. And he called my dad, and my dad was like, no. She was supposed to get that done at home. She did it. So, at school, she was a teacher. I had zero advantage. I can see your dad doing that, too. I, I got zero special treatment. In fact, it was worse because I started and we heightened with fifth grade. So I went right into middle school, so I knew nobody. And when I was trying to make friends, he was like not helping the situation at all. But you did okay. 20 seconds of I did do okay. You did okay. Yeah. Did you did more than okay. your great friends you have today. That's right. I didn't go to school with any of the friends that I had today. I mean, I still had my, my high school friends, but that's usually how it goes, and that's okay. But I mean, we still talk, but. They're all like having children and stuff, and they've become a solid member of the team in the last five years. Friendly staff. Thank you. Lunch, specials, and delicate. Look no, but like it's a companion. In Franklin Township. Yes. A wide selection no. of sandwiches and wraps. I still just have my dogs. And Loki. Sydney's Deli in Franklin Township. Or 20 seconds of the back. Full service dinners, corporate functions, right. and other events, <laughs> and they'll serve each guest during the length of your events. You've got to check out Sydney's Deli and Lehigh. Everything from lunch, specials, to you got to tell so everyone where these fireworks are. Sydney's yep. Deli and Franklin Downship. Find them online at Sydney'sDeli.com. Make sure to give them a like on Facebook. All right, welcome back to Colossal Purity Podcast. Leanne and I are talking about summer camps here in Palmerton, and Leanne, you're still going for the... I'm still solo on our camp. Yeah? Yeah. Cool. Are you still solo on technology camp? Yeah, yeah I want to try this 3D printer. Okay, but if you make a chess piece, or two or three or ten, then you have to go to chess camp then, logically. Right, yeah. Because what else are you going to do with your chess pieces? Sell them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, just a little recap the summer camps. How can people sign up and what are you offering? Okay. Um, again, if you go to our Facebook page or our uh, um, link to St. John Newman School, um, there's, there's sign-up sheets there. Um, and also, if uh, you just want to come and sign up at the location the first week of camp, you're welcome to do that as well. Um, we're interesting. We, my wife and I, had a boot camp in Lehighton for years and years. I think we ran it for over twenty years. I think some of those kids have now have children that are old enough to okay. come to this camp. So I'm hoping they come to this nice. boot camp as well. Uh, but we can uh, um, definitely. Uh, they can call the school. They can go online. They can go on Facebook, or it can show up that day. Nice. Got to call up, register. They won't let me in. I just turned fifteen. Maybe you can be a, a counselor. You know, we're always looking for volunteers. <laughs> yeah, that's why I say I volunteer for everything. And the show, it doesn't help. No, it doesn't. It doesn't, because I do <laughs> want to volunteer for everything. All right, the long-awaited fireworks list throughout the area. It, there's probably more being added, but uh, this is what we got so far. So Schuylkill County, 
you're in the Frackville area, Monday, July 3rd. Uh, Minersville, June 25th. Port Carbon, July 4th. Big Diamond Speedway, Friday, June 30th. St. Clair, Saturday, July 15th. And it says that the list will be updated as they come available. If you're in the Poconos, Stroudsburg area, Eastburg's Big Bang Fireworks is on July 1st at the East Stroudsburg Community Alliance. Uh, July 1st also in Central Park is the fireworks celebration. And Let Freedom Ring Pocono Park on July 1st and Shawnee Fireworks Display at Shawnee Mountain Festival and Events is also July 1st. And Tuesday, July 4th, 6 p.m., Coca-Cola Park is having their popular uh, food and family and fun games event. And fireworks will be afterwards and begin at 9.15. And of course, the Heighton Downtown Partnership presents 4th of July fireworks Tuesday, July 4th at 10 p.m. Now, Jim Thorpe. Don't they do that? Yeah, Jim Thorpe doesn't have them anymore. Wow. Jim Thorpe, I don't know. <laughs> so we asked uh, our viewers what's on their summer playlist. So what kind of songs do you listen to during the summer if you listen to any? Uh, I'm probably more of a Metallica guy. Oh, really? <laughs> Whoa. No. I didn't see that coming at all. <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> If I had to guess, I was thinking more like Dave Matthews Band, which I listen to as well. Yeah, I like Dave Matthews. But yeah, Metallica. I, to be honest, I can listen to just about anything, but... Right. Metallica. Wow, that left, came out of left field. <laughs> I wasn't ready for that. That's awesome, though. Good for you. I love Metallica. <laughs> Any song in particular that you Sam like? Sam Vanity. Yeah. yeah. That's a Summer good basketball playlist. workout. So, so if a car drives by the windows down and they're like... Rocking out to like hard Metallica, it is probably the St. John Newman's principle. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, cruising up and down the right? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't pass the same place twice within a half hour. Yes. Because that's uh, Cru cruising. Can't yes. do that often. Yeah. There's that fun fact. Yeah, there's that fun fact. Any summer fun activities? Uh, just to just keeping up with all the stuff in school. I, I like I said, I'm going, going away to West Virginia for a camp that my uh, youngest son is actually, he's working all seven weeks this year. So that's a week I get to spend out there with just him and uh, uh, my team's in the summer league. And uh, my wife and I are doing a lot of construction at our house right now. So uh, that's, uh, we're, we're pack filled with stuff too. But uh, I do want to thank you for, for letting me come in today though. This was very nice. Uh, the hardest thing is about getting, you, when you're starting new stuff up, especially, you know, it's really hard to get the word out and uh, yeah this is so, interesting I yeah didn't realize this happened yeah so, so I, I appreciate you having me down. absolutely you're welcome you're welcome back yeah the again time. there's a camp for everybody basketball camp art camp cheerleading camp technology camp and chess camp right so whatever kind of kid you are there's a place for you and right. so john newman's summer camps all right lastly they have to do some shout outs to some kids that are doing amazing things so we did an episode before franklin township athletic association teams the 12u national softball team won their all-star game a score of 18 to 6 and the 10u d2 won their game 17 to 15. Uh, baseball team the nine to ten year olds won against jim thorpe five to zero and they advance in the district 18 9 to 10 south bracket They'll play on Thursday, June 29th, either against Mensing or Weatherly uh, team. So stay tuned for that update. Uh, Palmerton softball team, the U10 and the U12 won their league championship games two weeks ago. So congratulations to all those kids. Excellent work, guys. Thank you. I love and that. Girls. <laughs> and if you're looking for something to do on a Sunday evening, early afternoon, the Lehighton Kickball League, Adult Kickball League, started their games this past Sunday and they're held at East Penn Sporting Club. You can find more information on their games by going to the Lehighton Adult Kickball League uh, Facebook page and you can see their schedule and teams. And uh, lastly, 
Colossal Radio is going to be at the National First Day on August 1st. The Doc will be playing your favorite music up at the Lehighton Park. And Leanne and I and the rest of the podcast team will be down here in Palmerton playing Colossal Radio music and telling you all about our podcast. And yeah, National Night Out. It's a big thing. People don't know what National Night Out is. It's basically um, a night where our um, local first responders are going to be um, hanging out. So definitely come on out for National Night Out. In Palmerton, after the event is over, they're immediately going to have a movie in the park that night as well. We heighten so, does that as well. Yeah, he does that as well. So there's lots of things coming up in the summer. Don't forget about Colossal Radio's upcoming events, the Seafood Boil, the Cruise, Jeep Fest, all can be found on the Colossal Radio website and the Hoffer Mill website. So get your tickets. That's going to do it for us. Thank you again for coming. And we'll see you guys, all of you, next time. We hope you enjoyed tonight's Colossal Community Podcast with your hosts, Keith Hines and Leanne Duck. Tune in next time.